the Code of Conduct Tribunal has adjourned the proceedings against the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onaga, until Tuesday, January the 22nd, 2019. Justice Onaga is facing legal action on a six count charge bordering on uh, alleged failure to declare his assets begins at the Code of Conduct uh, Bureau. At the beginning of the proceedings, the defense counsel, Mr. Wale Olanipeku, SAN, presented a motion challenging the jurisdiction of the tribunal to entertain the suit. But the prosecution counsel, Ali Umar SAN, objected to the hearing of the motion until the CGN is docked. Well, so the Federal High Court, as that was happening, made uh, a swift statement on the, what should have happened at the CCT today. As that was going on, the Federal High Court has to stop the government's plan arraignment of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onagan, before the Code of Conduct Tribunal. And it's ruling on two separate expatriate applications seeking to stop the trial. Justice Edward Maha ordered the parties to maintain status quo till January the 17th. He ruled on the two different suits that the defendants should be served with all the papers filed and appear in court at the next hearing. One of the two suits was filed by incorporated trustees of the Center for Justice and Peace Initiative. The other was filed by the incorporators, uh, International Association of Student Economists and Management. Those joined as defendants in the suit, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, the Chairman of CCT, the National Judiciary Council, Inspector General of Police, and the Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki. Let's get to these, everyone. The fallout of what happened today. This debate has been on. So we're looking at what has been in the spine of a major political and judicial discussion in the country today. So I have joining me from Abu Jasiru, a senior advocate of Nigeria, Chief Nii Akintola, and with him also is Mr. Ugochuku Oswago, is a member of the Presidential Committee on Administration of Criminal Justice Monitoring Section. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on tonight. And let me begin with you, uh, Senior Advocate uh, Nia Kintala. It's a pleasure having you tonight on the program. What do you make of what has happened? There's been a Thank lot you. of uh, uh, positions and opinions shared by lawyers and senior lawyers across the country since these issues uh, was raised. What is your stand on the plan agreement of the Chief Justice of Nigeria? Well, let me say straight away that uh, it was quite unfortunate. Quite unfortunate in the sense that uh, we've passed through this route before, and one would have thought that uh, one or two lessons would have been learned along the way. Like the popular say that uh, only madmen does the same thing using the same method and expecting different results. We continue to get the same results. For crying out aloud, the suspect here, yeah, my lord. I would just say, what I'm not You see, when it's a judicial officer, the laws are clearly stated on how judicial officers are to be handled in case there is any infraction on their part, in case of any breach of the code of conduct or even the law of the land. At least in the last 20 years or so, We've had, in the last two years, coming recently, we've had the cases of uh, Ganjua and the uh, Honorable Justice uh, Guta, Justice of Supreme Court, and of course, uh, to the other judges of the Federal High Court. Beyond that, I remember really well that under the 1992 dispensation, uh, which I took from them part, um, under Decree 50, that was under Babangida, attempt was made to rubbish the then chief judge of Ohio State, Rabbi Justice Ayurede. Because how people don't read. How these are in the archives. Chief wrote him Williams of Blessed Memory, led the legacy. Why are we passing, why are we take the light in making the same mistake over and over again? Pronouncements have been made by the same code of conduct tribunal as to how and when judicial officers are to be treated and in my paper in 19 
I mean, 2009, at International Conference Center, the alumni lecture of the University of Baden, which I delivered to the international community, I did say that, look, we have option in this country. The option is, we either abolish the law, go back to Marcia, if we want to fight corruption, because that was my own belief, and I still hold on tenaciously to that. that look, you cannot be running with the air yeah, and nothing with the horns at the same time. If you have sworn to obey the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and as local government chairman, as governor, as president, as anybody, you just have to hold on to it. Uh, Chief Ankintala. Are not allowed if you are not comfortable with it? Chief Ankintala, are you saying that the move in the first yes, place please. was abnormal? I beg your pardon? Are you saying the move to uh, rein the CGN in the first place was abnormal? Without following the due process, yes. Okay, let, let me quickly Don't ask Mr. Oswago. Uh, Mr. Oswago, uh, do you agree with what the senior advocate uh, just said? Um, well, um, my position has been that the CGN, including all other judicial officers, even any public officer, they are no, none of them are above the law. And having said this, that no person is above the law, we should encourage law enforcement institutions, agencies, in the bid to do their work in fighting corruption. The person in question we're talking about, although I don't want to go into the merits of what is before the tribunal, uh, if we were to go by what was written in the papers, uh, the CGN in question did admit that uh, he did not declare certain things in his asset declaration form. And having done that, we should commend the government for taking steps in bringing him before the tribunal to get justice. So I don't see anything wrong with what the federal government... The question is, uh, and I would like to get your reaction from what the federal high court has done today by uh, stopping the process. So it's about the process. Uh, and the big question that a lot of uh, lawyers are asking is, do, do, do these uh, process, was the right process and the due process taking in, in this case as to what has happened in the case of justice in Gagiwa uh, versus the federal government? Was the due process taking in consideration of the judgment that came out of that case at the, uh, at the appeal court? I'm aware of the, the, the judgment in the Nkajiwa case. Um, I'm also aware of the judgment in the case of uh, Nguta that clearly spelled out the uh, prominent functions and duties of the National Judicial Council that un unless a judge or a judicial officer has been brought before the NGC and impeached or probably dismissed from office, that is when you cannot proceed against such judicial officer. But we must not forget that this same matter has gone on appeal by the EFCC. And having said this, the learned jurist still has ample opportunity to present this argument before the tribunal. So we should leave this issue of whether the Nguta case and Ngajima applies to this particular one to the determination of the tribunal. 